what you said about him and his relationship with his brother, mm -hmm. you could see it on his face yeah. and his responsibility to his parents. You could see like the maybe not sleeping very well or drinking, binge drinking or, you know, things like that. You could s see how weathered his face was mm -hmm. from just the things I think you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And also the stresses of having this uh, contractor business. You know, we've both seen Steven Yeun in different roles, yeah. you know, starting with Walking Dead is that, you know, the little boy with the baseball cap, mm -hmm. you know, very, mm -hmm. very Korean American of mm -hmm. what the year 2005, maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> um, grow up to be what I didn't realize until watching the show to be a very good actor. Yeah, so much. Depth. He lost yeah. himself in this role. Yeah. He completely went there. Mm -hmm. He goes there. He goes to places I never knew he had. Yeah. Like I saw Burning mm -hmm. and he had kind of a very stoic character yeah. in that. I'd never seen him bring it like this. Mm -hmm. Like he brought it. He brought yeah. the pathos big time in this role. For and sure. if this was a movie, mm -hmm. he deserves an Oscar mm -hmm. for this. Yeah. Um, maybe he'll get an Emmy. It's not the same prestige. Um, but he really, really, really brought it. And I think he carries the 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 show i think he carries the show but i was just stunned by his talent yeah me too yeah and also we learn that he can sing he can play guitar yeah um he he joins this church group that's a whole other thread that we probably don't have time to get into mm -hmm. but you know he joins this church group and he becomes a member of the band and he sings in the band and it's kind of this cathartic release for him yeah. but i just was i was blown away i he was magnetic like a like a Al Pacino level magnetic mm -hmm. in this show. And I just cannot heap enough praise on him. What did mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, I thought the same. Yeah. Um, he had that like, yeah, it, th this kind of crazed look about him sometimes yeah. that was very realistic. Crazed was, and contained. Yeah, and contained. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, you know, somebody who is keeping a lot of shit yeah. contained. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean by you can see on his face. Which is the... Um, the essence of Korean man rage. Yeah, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And Ali Wong, I thought was great, um, but she carried something different. She carried on on her face, in her actions, a constant state of desperation and anxiety, mm -hmm. constantly. That character is honestly a bit of a hero of mine. <laughs> She's always smiling. You know what she does that's what, that you do? What? This is the comparison of Cece to Ali Wong's character in the show. You aim so hard to please people mm -hmm. because it has to do with business or yeah. it has to do with expectation. Expectation, I mm -hmm. think, is, is the overarching thing. You are very nice to people who you have to deal with. Yeah. There is a lot of pressure on to be and, and once again, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on other pe other demographics as well, but there's a lot of pressure on Asian women to behave to behave a certain way mm -hmm. and to be like pleasant and agreeable and those pressures are not overt obviously. Like, you know, people won't come out and say to you like, "Hey, because you're an Asian woman, you should be nicer to me." But <laughs> I'm telling you Mm. It really is there. Mm -hmm. And I felt it more, if anything, outside of Korea. Like, it's really okay. weird. Well, you definitely do it in Seoul. <laughs> yeah. But I there, but there's like sort of an expectation. I think people just kind of assume that, and it's worked to my benefit mm -hmm. as well as to my detriment. Like, people just assume that you're going to be docile and submissive. Yeah, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a, it's, um, like at home, you're you're not that way. And when, like for example, you were spending time with my family, you weren't that way. You're exactly who you are. I am not with that friends. way. Period. Yeah. No, but when you, but yeah, yeah. I hope this is okay to say. <laughs> That's fine. But when you're dealing with other people, yeah. who are not close to you, it's yeah, almost it's, like you pour out this, yeah. like she, like Ali Wong's character does in the show, the smile and the and the mm. tone of voice and to people who are basically strangers. Yeah, it's a programming. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's it's deeply programmed in yeah. us. Um 
And I don't know what it was, but there's a con- there's a, a line that Stephen Yun says throughout the show. He says it several times, and it's become a meme, mm-hmm. and a lot of my friends are sharing it. Um, Western philosophy doesn't work on Eastern minds. <laughs> he said it twice, and both times we burst out laughing. <laughs> he says to Ali Wong, you are proof that Western yeah. philosophy doesn't work on Eastern minds. And when mm-hmm. she's in therapy, uh, Western, not Western philosophy, therapy, Western therapy. Yes, When that was she's it, that was it. in therapy, mm-hmm. she is being nice to the therapist. She's yes, not, yeah, right. and she's telling the therapist what she wants to hear, yes. what the therapist wants to hear. Mm-hmm. And so that's apparently one of the examples of why it wouldn't work on us apparently mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah um, ah, that makes sense and and we could get into that but i don't even know why these issues I, this is a very like complex social yeah issue but um all ali wong's character is a hero of mine <laughs> because as flawed as she was she had empathy in the end Run with that. What do you think this TV show is about? Empathy. Yeah. Yeah. So she was able to feel what he felt. Yes. At the end. Yeah. And and in the end, well, I'm tearing up. I know you are. In the end, they both decided that they weren't very different. Yeah. And there, there's a... I wouldn't say that they love each other, but I think they are. They do become friends, you know, mm-hmm. in, the, in, in the very end. And we don't really see this happening right. necessarily. Just the very, very, very end scene. Well, can um, I... Yeah. 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 No, I don't you? mean I don't want to cut you off, but I think if, what you're saying is leading into what I think the show is about. Right. And I think it's very connected to this idea. I think that the show is about transcendence. Oh. So it's the idea that I think if we think about sort of contemporary society and all of the anxiety and expectations that are shown in the show and all of the pressures that people have to deal with. And, and we're all trying to communicate with each other. We have this pro- proliferation of communication. Um, I'm just going to name drop Gilles Deleuze again. <laughs> Sorry. He has this great quote, though. Mm-hmm. He says, communication either comes too early or too late. Mm. And... That line has always stuck with me. It, for Deleuze, there's, there's no problem with communication. Mm-hmm. We have communication. The problem that we have is something like empathy. The problem that we have is we cannot really um, get a sense of things. And I think that it is because there is just too much communication. There's too much information. Right. Okay, I'll borrow from Sting. Sting sang that in the song, too much information. Mm-hmm. There's too much information. There's too much communication. There's too much pressure. There's too much anxiety, too much expectation. It comes through in this show. Mm-hmm. These two have a conflict over a very contemporary modern existence. Mm-hmm. And that is road rage. Mm-hmm. Um, born of the shit that they have to deal with, just yeah. coming to a head. Right. And like I said earlier, just needing, you need someone to fight with. You need something to combat, mm-hmm. which I think people don't really have right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, these two characters take these berries mm-hmm. <laughs> after, after the big shootout in the show. They take these berries and they hallucinate and they mm-hmm. kind of break down their language. Like brand, language kind of breaks down, identity breaks down. They actually swap identities for a mm-hmm. while. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's also kind of Deleuzean. I'm sorry to say. Uh, oh, I'm no, sorry I get to keep it. name dropping I get him, it, but yeah. but this idea of this kind of fluid back and forth. It's not communication. Mm-hmm. And then the very last shot of the show. Mm-hmm. Now I'm getting emotional. Mm-hmm. Is um, Danny lying in a hospital bed? Mm-hmm. And she's with him. And she gets up from her chair and she climbs into the bed and she puts her arm around him. And then just before the cut happens, he puts his arm around her. Yeah. 
that is transcendence. Mm. That is going beyond language. All of the thing that you, th- all the things that you thought you could figure out by just right. dealing with people and saying the right things right. and doing all the right things and talking to your parents and apologizing to your parents and having to deal with all of that stuff and try to talk it out and talk it out. Mm. There's even the therapy element here. Mm-hmm. And then they just, in the end, they don't, they don't talk about things. Mm. Like they never come to this very... <laughs> 2023 idea that if you just talk about it, you'll be able to understand right, the other person. Right. They come to understand each other beyond language. <laughs> yes. That's what I mean by transcendence. Yeah. yeah. And that's also why I asked you in the beginning, how much of this show do you think is about being Asian American? But I think that's part of the Asian mm-hmm. existence. Uh, you know, again, I'm not an Asian person, but I think that's part of it is this kind of, this, it's a very different kind of angst, I think. Mm-hmm that is carried and even i think even worse there's communication at the surface level and it's only saying the things that don't need to be said yeah yeah, in order to just cope yeah and the things that need to be said don't Mm -hmm. get said Mm -hmm. and and i think that's even harder i don't mean to essentialize for everybody everybody's different but i think that's harder for in the in the kind of asian american collision that happens Mm -hmm. yeah i honestly didn't think that this show would be that good when I saw the poster yeah. or whatever. I thought it would be like Kim's convenience store, you know, I, I don't that, know that shit show of a sitcom. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a slapsticky, like mm-hmm. you know, comedy, like you know, yeah. trying to be woke. Uh, right, and this situation. this show didn't do that. And it's it's credit to the writers that mm-hmm. it's very difficult to show commonalities or kind of thread, you know, stereotypes is a very difficult Mm -hmm. term because, of course, stereotypes are real. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why there are stereotypes. Um, But you can't reduce someone to a stereotype. That's the danger. So it's a a very tricky balance to Mm -hmm. show what is a a cultural Mm -hmm. thing Mm -hmm. without being a stereotype. And Mm -hmm. I think this show handled that very well from my perspective. Yeah. 